This is a podcast by The Straits Times. Welcome to Green Pulse, a podcast series by The Straits Times where we analyze the beats of the changing environment, from biodiversity conservation to climate change. Hi, I'm Audrey Tan and I cover science and environment for The Straits Times. Sustainability has been nudged up the national agenda this year, with Singapore announcing plans to tackle climate change and create jobs in the sustainability sector. The National Development Ministry has taken this mission to heart, unveiling plans earlier this year to transform Singapore into a city in nature. But with the pandemic raging on in the background, what has COVID-19 taught us about the importance of sustainability? I catch up with National Development Minister Desmond Lee to find out his take on the issue. Sustainability and resilience go hand in hand. To be resilient to shocks, you have to be sustainable in the way we do things. And sustainability has got a very broad sort of application. Environmental sustainability, resource sustainability, lifestyle sustainability. We've always emphasized the importance of sustainability's blueprint, sustainability blueprint. Every few years, we consolidate the book down to draw people's attention to the importance of sustainability. But as I said, to be resilient, you have to be sustainable. But sustainability first requires stewardship and partnership in the sense that to exercise the spirit of sustainability, you have to be steward, recognize that the resources that you're using or have at your disposal, while they may, in all senses of the word, be yours, but in the spirit of the mindset of a steward, you want to husband the resources in a sustainable way, recognizing that you have a responsibility beyond yourself. So for a government to be sustainable as a steward, you recognize that these resources are to be marshaled and cared for and used judiciously, carefully, necessarily, but recognizing that we owe a responsibility to the future. The future of Singaporeans who have no voice today, these resources are not for us to squander or to spend entirely on ourselves, though we may have needs, but to be a steward, to use it wisely for today, but also marshal it in favour of generations yet unborn, so that there is a future for Singapore or whatever you're looking after. And so sustainability and the stewardship mindset also applies to companies, also applies to non-profits, also applies to ground announcements, to NGOs. And then the second thing I think it's important is partnership. That in order to achieve a sustainable way of life, whatever we do, we have to recognise that none of us can do it alone. I mean, if all of us just use the resources we need, then collectively, I think there will be lots of wastage and inefficiencies. But if you come together in partnership, part of the sharing economy adopts that mindset. You know, if everyone holds their own assets and resources, then that is not as sustainable as if we are able to partner each other and make good use of resources. And there are many examples of where this can work. So how will sustainability be incorporated into your ministry, which is the Ministry of National Development? Before I start, I uh, recognise that sustainability has to be a whole-of-government effort. Uh, involves many ministries. The Ministry of Sustainability and Environment is one of the agencies at point of spear for this. And its renaming and its focus reflects the government's emphasis on sustainability on many fronts, environmental, economic, social, so on and so forth. But there are other agencies involved, MND for infrastructure, and of course, transport, MTI for the economy and jobs and industry, and many others. But beyond being a whole of government responsibility, I think it's a whole of nation. But let me just give a broad preamble on MND's responsibilities and the work we've been doing. We are, of course, a city and a state of 720 square kilometres, one of the most densely populated cities in the world. These are realities that we've grappled with, but in a way, our early pioneers have overcome that by ensuring that we pay heavy emphasis on ensuring that though we are small and densely populated, back then it was Garden City, a major push for greening. I think that sends a strong signal. I mean, in times of plenty, you, you put effort on greening, it's one. But it says a lot about your resolve and your values when in the early days of modern Singapore, when resources were very scarce and there were lots of other needs competing and probably at top of people's minds, that our early leaders, our first generation of leaders, put personal emphasis and the emphasis of the government on greening says a lot. And I think for close to 60 years, we've kept faith with that. And I think we have uh, everyone's support in parliament on that as a national imperative as part of our national identity. But 
We also have to be green and sustainable on many other fronts. And at least from MND's perspective, it's a big push for urban sustainability. Green Towns is a 10-year push to further reduce the energy usage of our HDB estates. So 2005 to now, I think we've cut about 10% of energy usage in HDB towns. And by 2030, through this 10-year effort of the Green Town movement, to cut it by a further 15%. Whether it's a stretch target or whether we can push even more, I think we have to be as ambitious as bold, but as practical as possible. So 10% and another 15% through a lot more rooftop solar PV panels, through rainwater harvesting, through smart LED, through greening of a number of our rooftops of multi-storey car parks. And then with the support of BCA, we are now reworking and remastering the uh, Green Building Master Plan. You know, every few years we have a master plan and we keep pushing. And if you've seen the evolution of our Green Building Master Plans, you see greater and greater efforts on that front, building upon foundations we've achieved by trying to fulfil each master plan as we've committed to. And so we are in the process of developing the next Green Building Master Plan. And from January to now, notwithstanding pandemic, We've reached out to about 1,500 stakeholders, building owners, trade associations, professionals, NGOs, members of the public, and we continue to take on board views to develop that. So that is urban green, urban sustainability. Now, if you like what you're hearing so far, do subscribe to our series Green Pulse on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or even on Spotify and like us and give us a rating. Now back to our conversation with Mr Desmond Lee, Minister for National Development, on how his ministry intends to champion the sustainability cause. But even in the city, I think one can dream of a Singapore where our buildings are dripping with greenery. <laughs> one day I'll, I'll describe in more detail how that could possibly be. But I've been sitting in my same MND office for the last seven years, and my window has a view of the Oasia Hotel, and it's been attempting to be completely green. It's a red cladding for vertical greenery, but you've seen examples in Europe and other cities where through a combination of technology and very good foundation in botany, you're able to clad the whole building in the protective envelope of nature. So you've seen Margaret Drive. There's one particular car park which I've seen I keep driving by on the way to constituency. It's not a vertical green in the sense that you have a vertical wall, but it is those planter boxes and the good selection of plants that create that draping effect. And if you are in that building, you then experience firsthand the services of nature, as a good friend of mine, Faiza Jamal, shared many years ago, both in Parliament and with me through long conversations. Okay, I'll talk about the value of nature later. I think that's a very important point to push. But from garden city to city in a garden to now city in nature, at that high level that you're asking me to paint, that is one big push that we continue to evolve and have high ambition for. Then urban sustainability, ensuring that our buildings are green and sustainable in terms of energy and resource use. And we do that through Green Town. Of course, the early routes was Green Print at Ihua, and then BCA's Green Building Master Plan, which applies across the board for industrial, commercial, residential, private, public, across the board. But also through retrofitting opportunities to make the building more sustainable. But BCA has even gone further, you know, in the last few years to even focus on user behaviour. That is, like Health Promotion Board, you know, changing behaviour is always the hardest. Right? Designing a building, retrofitting a building so that it's sustainable is one thing, but changing user behaviour, which does make up not just a, a not insignificant portion of energy use, but that mindset is what we want to ingrain, that DNA. If you have a habit of switching off your lights, saving on water, recycling the things that you use so that waste becomes reusable, then that will apply across the board to many other areas. And in fact, some of the climate activists I engaged last year had said that, you know, you want to move the needle, you have to move on government, on industry and big pieces. Uh. But my point to them is every individual should also play their part and not withstanding the fact that even if you sum it all up, it's probably not as big a needle move as other systemic changes you can make. Every individual is an individual, is a member of a family and can influence the family, is a member of a community, is a member of some community organisation, could be an employee or a boss, could be a senior public officer or political office holder. And if you imbibe and internalise that sustainable mindset, then it will influence broader organisations. Uh, so that's urban green from a 
the way the buildings are run to the way we use those facilities. But I like to even go further upstream, and that is how you design buildings, construct them, and how you design estates, towns, and urban centres. Building and construction and operationalization of buildings are resource intensive. And if you want to be sustainable, you have to really go upstream. It's harder to retrofit a building. It's more sensible and effective to design it well. Harness natural lighting, natural ventilation, put in your chill beam, put in your LEDs up front, reduce abortive work so that you reduce wastage. It's not saving money, it's also saving resource and being more sustainable. And so that whole effort, and I'll take another occasion to describe that to you and why it's not just good business sense, but also good from an environmental point of view, because we do need to build. And if we need to build, we must make sure we plan holistically. And so urban planning is important. Maximizing the usage of space in landscape Singapore and resource landscape Singapore is critical. So town planning and technology is helping on the front. There are many tools and technological tools that agencies are now harnessing to make sure we build effectively. For starts, HDB has got tools to look at massing, to look at orientation to sun, to look at where to place your windows, how to use natural ventilation. And so some of these simulations allow you to weave into your first designs, those critical first stages, elements of sustainability. Because if you build badly, you end up having to do lots of cooling and lots of abortive and retrofitting work. And that's really not sustainable. So really early design and planning is utterly critical. So that is designing, building, operating and living sustainably in urban setting. And then we've talked also about greening, biodiversity conservation and really harnessing the wonderful services that nature provides. And in a city like ours, all the more we should cherish and value that. I think you've visited cities where you feel that it's really a city and it's really harsh. It's harsh from a well-being point of view, it's harsh on your eyes, it's harsh on your skin as you feel its heat. It's harsh on your feet because it's all brick and mortar. You weather the extremes in a city that seeks to disrespect nature. So that's a broad sweep and stewardship and partnership are important in driving all of these engines that power our efforts towards sustainable living. That was Mr Desmond Lee, Minister of National Development, on his vision for sustainability in urban Singapore. For more on Singapore as a city in nature, do check out the stories in The Straits Times. That's a wrap for Green Pulse and we hope you enjoyed our discussion. That was an SPH podcast by The Straits Times. Find us on Spotify, Apple or Google Podcasts or streaming on Google Home. Do feedback to us at podcast.sph.com.sg. You can also check out more podcasts on various topics at The Straits Times, The Business Times and Money FM 89.3.